everyone and welcome. This is the Saturday Human Colony Hukalo webinar. It is Saturday, the 3rd of November. The year is going so fast. Uh, we have in our room today, we have Aisha, Amanda, Catalan, Christine, Dave, Don, Ava, Ian, Lana, James, or Ziana, excuse me, uh, Wendy, Lucia, Marlena, Pamela, Reinhard, and Shear. Hi, everybody. And then who do you have in your room, Jim? I have Angie and John and Barb and James and who's the David. David and Will and Ray. Perfect. And just to introduce everyone to you, we have also our wonderful channel, James Charles, with us today. Hello. Yeah. Hello. So just to do a few announcements, uh, just to let you know, this is the Saturday Human Colony webinar. This is a paid webinar which means it is only open in the Google room here for the members of the Hukalo Club. If you would like to join the Hukalo Club, you can go to hukalo.org, which is a website forward slash webinars, and you can join the club. And it also, all of the contributions help with the running of Human Colony and all of the nice programs that we put out there. On Fridays, we have with Ian, who I'll let introduce himself, uh, we have the free, uh, Hukalo Channeling Group. Ian, why don't you say something about it? Sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Ian, and I'm the host of the weekly practice channeling group uh, as part of Hukalo. And we get together every Friday afternoon at 4.30 Eastern Daylight Time. And it's a place where we all, uh, all of us who do channel or wish to channel um, get together. And the ones who don't know how to channel learn from the ones that do. And so we have a great time every Friday and we have a lot of fun and it's free to join. And you can find it on Facebook under the Hukalo Weekly Channeling Practice Group is the name of the group. And it's free to join. Perfect. And you're, you've got how you've got you've got quite a group now, don't you there? Uh, we have just over 100 members. All right. So all of the future channelers, the future Hukalo channelers of tomorrow are are there in the group. I think. Excellent. Yeah. And then uh, coming up, hopefully we haven't done it yet, but I'd like to do it sometime in the, in the next few months is to have a uh, practice channeling webinar where we have a uh, few people from that group that can channel 10 or 15 minutes and just in a very supportive atmosphere and just give them the opportunity to channel on the webinar. So whenever we're ready to set that up, Ian will let me know and we're going to put it on the schedule. So also, if you are not unfamiliar with Human Colony and you haven't really, or you're unfamiliar with this sort of side of the spiritual world, I have a very nice book uh, to recommend for you. It's called From the Galaxy with Love. It's a light worker's handbook, and it's written by our founders, Max Rempel and Jim Charles. It's a culmination of, of a lot of the channeling that Jim has done over the years, and it's just a beautifully written book. You can find it on Amazon.com. It comes as a ebook, but also as a audio book, and you can download it. If you don't find it on Amazon, please go to the hukalo.org website and you can find it there. And then coming up next week, we have a very special uh, event coming up and Will's going to describe the event. Hey, here we go. Yes. <laughs> Hi, my name is Will Mitchell and uh, next week, Jim, Myself, Angie, and Wendy from Languages of Lights are going to present um, embodying, embracing. It, yeah. embracing, embracing, embodying, and emanating the true light. And it's mostly a channel class, and um, it's light language coming through now. Yes, go ahead. Atakari etika atsuhuta, takanana atsia etika sukuhu asaya. This is a class to help whoever wants to clear their path spiritually and get a greater grasp on their mission and a greater grasp on their spiritual nature. 
that it is a class for those who want to move forward and get closer to the truth about who they really are, the truth about who God really is, and the, the truth about what uh, the ascension is all about. Also about so many things about um, the outside world that you need to know so that you can actually present yourself to the world in a, a productive way so that the world will understand that you are a being of light. Absolutely. Absolutely. So when does the class start? So next Saturday and Sunday, um, the 10th and the 11th, three, three to six Eastern, and we're in standard time as of tomorrow, um, three to six, check out World Time Buddy. Uh, we posted it on Facebook, and soon we'll post it on Google+. Plus. Um, yeah, check it out when it's happening in, in your time. It's $111. <laughs> and it's $111, and you can send it to Reiki with Will on PayPal, these friends and family. Um, and if you ever had wondering why things don't go right, and you think you're doing it right, this class might help to get back on track. And it will answer questions that you you have about spirituality and about the light and about yourself. It's, it's just a time for great clarity for us all. I know that we are going to learn something in this class as well. It's not that we have all the answers. No, that's, no, no, no. Not, that's not what this is about. This is a time of sharing. This is a time of unconditional love where we need to uh, learn about each other and how we communicate with one another and how God communicates through each of us in his own special way. And God is a, a great one for diversity. He speaks to each of us in our own way because we have our own special gifts, but yet, we're supposed to speak to the world in a special way as well so, so that we can unite with them and let them understand who we are as well. So this is a time of great opening and communication, one with another, and learning how to communicate not only with one another, but with the world as well and with God. Well said. So they could go to reikiwithwill.com and find, is that right? Is that your website? No. Reiki with Will? What is your no, website? No, go on to Facebook. Go on okay. to Facebook, uh, The Aquarium Fire. You can find me on Facebook, uh, Reiki with Will, um, okay. at gmail.com. Uh, that's, that's where we have it posted at this point. Okay. So go on to Facebook, look for the, what is the group called? Reiki with Will. Um, the Aquarian Fire oh, is the, the page. Okay, the Aquarian Fire Facebook group or Reiki with Will at gmail.com. Thank you. Okay. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, just to be clear. Okay, so we're going to do some blessings now, and we'll start with Dave, and then we'll go to Wendy, and then we'll go into your room. If we can okay, okay, and that will be Barbara, right? Barbara, and then Will. Yes. We should have had you stay up at the front, Will. <laughs> All right. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Brashna shiwana safi waka nahute brahanza hashi ewashana hata waka nas brashna hute brashna. Eua vasha nea hute, brahute anas wo, e jaga na hai waka nas, praku anahi waka, droho ashna, biwa seya fea shana hata tiwaka, prishunga dahi. Be aware that the light is permeating through your world and that God wants you to see things as they really are and as they truly will be. And he wants you to know that he is 
in charge of all that you let him in charge of. So give over to him all that you have so that you may be profitable in all ways of spirituality and in all ways in, th in this earthly realm, for he is in control of it all, your health and the dynamics of all the things you do. Thank you. Wendy? Niasatoshe, <laughs> La coriando la soca, la india sole, la she, la she la cole, la cala kela. Namaste. Do not forget to pray for Mother Earth and all the things of the world, for they all need lifted up at this time. There is a great need for prayer and a great need for devotion at this time. Give your heart over to God so that He may help you to pray for those things that are necessary today. Do not forget to pray for all those around you, family and friends, and even yourself. Much love to all of you, for you are in need of God's eternal love. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. And then Barbara? Barbara. When in the eyes of God, reasoning can be futile. Sometimes it is meant to be uplifted, but other times you must put into the hands of God those things that are not ordinarily in your own thought processes to give to him. Remember, generalities and things that may seem insignificant are also concerns of God. So give him all things that are there before you. Do not just take into consideration the large picture, but the smallest of the pictures create the large picture in truth. Thank you. Ooh, that was the Beautiful. Same. And then Will, he's coming back. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, we are with you, sending you blessings, sending you energy, and sending you hope for a great new ascension that will continue forever. And we ask that you just understand that as there are many praying for you, please pray for us as well. For we are also in need of prayer in so many ways. The universe has its negativities and positivities. And the truth is that we are all in need of prayer. And so reach out and give and accept and know that you are loved. 
Thank you. Nice. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. So today we have some requests just to tell you. Uh, Rochelle has been requested, Grendel, um, Aishiyama, if I said it wrong, Ashi, how do I say it, Don? Say it. Ashimama. Ashiyana. Nana. Ashiyana. Ashi Nana. Ashiyana. <laughs> it's spelled Ashiyana. Ashiyana. And then King David. And then I think Sheer had a request, but he had walked away to Kurt. The dream, the dream, dream walker. Dreamwalker. And then AI. AI was also oh, that's right too. Thank you. AI and then also to Kerr. Oh my, so many requests. So many. They're all standing in line with numbers. <laughs> so yeah. let's because there are a few of them here already. So okay. that is that is cool. Well, we're happy so to hear from whomever wishes oh, yes. to show up. Elijah, thank you. Um, I don't know if it's lying. <laughs> he didn't tell me he was coming today, but he might be here. I'm not sure. Because I was, I was out of my element for a minute. Okay. Thank you. Bill. All right, I'm going to do a meditation, and we'll bring whoever comes first. Okay. But I have a feeling more than one will come today, of course. All right. All right. Greetings, this is Shell from the Chikani people. Greetings, Shell, welcome. It is good to be here with you today. This now is a precious one, for it is one that brings us together in many thoughts and many prayers. I know that there must be questions out there, but I want to say that as the day began, the atmosphere was very troubled. But now the atmosphere is calming and becoming more gracious and beautiful. And I want God's people to ask questions and know that they will get an answer one way or another. Perfect. Wendy does have a question. We can start with her. Anyone else has a question, please type it in the chat. Hi, Shell. Thank you so much for being with us today. Great um, a few a few of us, um, Liney and I specifically, um, recently, but I know several, uh, many others of us have been experiencing this extreme shift and feeling this pressing need more and more to share the teachings um, that not only that you have learned and taught us, but that have that you that it's the universal knowledge, I guess. And I guess I'm two things I wanted to ask is one specifically, why is it so strongly within us, um, especially she and I over the last few days specifically. And last night I had a dream of a serpent um, and I felt as if it was somehow connected to this wanting to share this, this universal knowledge. There are many dreams of serpents these days. I have heard many speak of this. The reason is because this is the time for prayer. This is the time for the information to come forward just before there are great things that happened on the planet. I do not want to say catastrophes at this time because I do not know if you would see them that way, but there are great things happening and they will awaken people to the understanding that they must take a side from of good against evil, or if they choose not to, then they have chosen the opposite direction. But I want to tell you that it is burning in many hearts that the word of God is out there and is important 
to the people at this time. They need to know the truth about what God thinks and what God feels and what God wants you to know. And so this is why it is burning in your heart at this time. And it will prepare some people for what is coming. Now, I do, like I said, I do not want to say catastrophes, but there are things that will come that will have to wake, awaken people and give them choices and let them know that God is in control. Thank you. I appreciate. I appreciate that, and and yes. Um. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. If I have another question, I'll come back. Thank you very much. Um. Thank you. No, I was just going to say, it is on the hearts of many that the truth must be spoken, and that it's on the hearts of many that it is not clear where the world is going. It is not clear that the ascension has taken hold, even though it has. It has definitely taken hold. But you, you do not see the evidences of it every day. You do not see that there are is great light shining on your planet every day. But you must understand, in the hearts of those that it is burning, it continues to raise. And the world is moving forward. I do feel that that's why many of us were um, guided, uh, Jim and Will included, to um, to have this event next week because I feel like it's part of all of that 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 raising of energy, if you will. Um, and I've really been feeling that ever since I um, understood about Epsilon Epiphany and Eclipse and the the loving energy that the Shikani pushed through the moonlight. So I wanted to reiterate that to everybody that um this is real and this information that's being you know sent through from from them um and uh, i'm constantly like in this constant i feel like i'm in this constant contact with the shikani race like all day i feel like i'm constantly receiving and sharing this information um and i feel it was interesting that bashar's birthday is on 11 11 and we just happened to have <laughs> this event it just turned out that it's going to be on 11 11 and then 2018 equals 11. so i feel this powerful numerological energy um can you comment on it i, I guess it's just really permission slips we've given ourselves but um can you comment on any of that as far as like uh, so many of us now too are experiencing you know the the multiple numbers and you know um is it just our psychic yeah. abilities being enhanced is that really what's happening here <laughs> there are that is much of it but it is more of this many people are looking at the future to become enlightened but they don't know what enlightenment really is and some of them have come close but fallen shy of it but they want to know that what enlightenment really is all about and how to become enlightened and how to share enlightenment with others now let me tell you this about enlightenment when you become enlightened, you are sharing energy with everyone that comes into your presence. They will feel your energy. They will know your presence. They will feel that you are with them in some way, and they will know your love because that enlightenment is joyful, happy, positive, welcoming, loving so this class that you are talking about coming up on 11 11 11 is one that will open eyes to what enlightenment really is about and how to get there in some ways i'm not saying that the class will enlighten you to bring you to that place but it will give you the guidelines on how to do that. It will give you some guidelines on how to get where you want to go. Enlightenment is not an easy path, but it is a path that all can follow. 
Well, thank you, and I appreciate that. And um, I invite you and my elder guide Echo to be with us next next uh, uh, weekend for the for the the event. So, um, if you are so inclined, we do invite you and your energy. Thank you very much for being with us today. There will be many that will be there. It will be a, a time of sharing with many. There will be different perspectives and thought processes about how to reach the places that you want to be and how to use those uh, negative times and negative experiences as a stepping stone to a positive life. Yes, thank you. I I feel like we are all learning how to utilize the idea of the now and that everything is here and now and I feel like that's part of this message is remembering that if everything is here and now and what we perceive as the past and what we perceive as the future is simply an illusion and I feel like that whole the threads of all of that are, are unraveling now for us and we're beginning to realize that we don't need to carry things from one now to the next unless we want to for the experience. Very well. Your perception is a very positive one. And you can allow that to maintain itself in many ways. The nows are very useful to many people and for many times. But I don't want to get into them right now. Thank you. This Thank now. you. <laughs> Ava has a question. Go ahead, Ava. Greetings. Um, I also have a question about my dream. Um, this is a dream which kept recovery, recur recurring. Um, I've seen it really many times in the past. Um, in this dream, I, I am with a group of people who are um, retrieving, running away from some aggressors. And I am exactly between those people and those who want to harm them uh, because in this dream I cannot be harmed and I am the protector of those people. So um, I have a question. Can you have access to it and give me an yes, insight? I understand it. When you are doing the will of God, you stand up courageously against the foe, against the enemy. And so when Ever you stand up against an army like this, you are letting them know that you have God on your side and that you cannot be harmed in the ways that they would want to harm you. They would want to bring you into their understanding, into their belief processes, into what they want you to be and do. But you are standing against that because you are standing with the light and standing with the truth. And that is a courageous position. Thank you. That's actually wonderful. Um, I have another question, quick question. I have to. Um, yesterday, I discovered a tick, tick on my back. And um, there would be nothing strange about that as I go hiking. I love hiking. The child. But what? I don't know. She dropped away. She dropped away. Her, she over. She, she dropped out. Sometimes yeah. her internet drops. So let's just give her a moment. All um, right. Because she'll, she usually will pop back on. Um, in the meantime, why don't we, uh, we'll give her we'll just, just a We'll just send her some energy of love and, and help bring her back. Okay. Here she comes. I think. There she is. Ava, you back? No. <laughs> that's all right. She she is, she's we'll get back to her. Ava, you ready? Are you back? No, she's she dropped out again. She might be yeah. might be struggling with battery. Sheer, why don't you go ask your question and then if she comes back, we'll pick it up after after that. Greetings, Chef. How are you? I am well. And yourself? 
I'm very well. Um, I currently study water engineering, and I have a couple of questions that, well, the field right here can't answer them. Maybe you can answer them for me. I will see. Well, um, the thing is, when you are in that field, you understand all the different difficulties about uh, how to bring people fresh water and how to do it in a, in a way that doesn't waste a lot of el electricity and uh, other chemical um, products. Um, and one of the things that I was thinking about is using vibrations in order to um, get water in a way that is just the water molecule and not with other things that are uh, trapped inside of it, like uh, heavy metals and parasites and stuff like that. Is it possible to purify a water in a large scale just by using vibration in a, in a special tank? <laughs> yes. The half whores use toning for doing such a thing. They can <clears throat> use toning to clear, clear water, to clear uh, plains and mountain peaks and different things. You can use toning for many different kinds of clarifications. Um, also, you're talking about vibrational clarification. You can send energies out across the land as well. But the toning is one of the best ways to do the clarification. It may take some time. You won't clear the water in uh, five minutes, but you will be able to clear it if you continue to tone for a while. And I would call on the Hathors to help you so that you would know exactly when to start when to stop and what tonalities are necessary to clear which kinds of bacteria, heavy metals, and parasites. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, Ava's back. Go ahead, Ava. I'm sorry, my computer keeps disconnecting, so I'll try again. Um... We got as far as the tick on your back. Yes, but what was very strange that the tick was not alive. And again, that happened only with like dogs or cats wearing the tick collars and I'm not wearing any. So um, I wonder if some kind of protection happened because I, I do have amazing protection. So if there was some intervention in that subject as Lyme disease is really not a pleasure here. Thank you so much. Yes, you've recently come into a different understanding of energy and how it's affected you is very positive. Now, the thing is you do have good protection and that is working for you. But take this as a good sign that things are moving forward for you not only in just the physical realm, but spiritually, with skills and gifts, with all kinds of thought processes, you're starting to make some inroads into places where you've always wanted to be. Thank you so much. Very well. Thank you. Um, we do have a question from the group chat and it's uh um what can you tell us about the downfall of the cabal and the upcoming arrest and disclosure if there is such a thing they the cabal is still in power they are there are some of them that are falling but the <laughs> most part the highest uh the highest uh levels of the cabal are still very active and still very powerful. And they are looking to find a way that to come back strongly after the economy collapses. The economy is not about to collapse quite yet. They are keeping it uh, afloat with their energies and with their powers. And 
when it does collapse, they want to have a plan in place so that they can reorganize the world for their greatest benefit. Now, that saying that, they are not ready for that yet. So they're going to keep the financial situation uh, status quo as long as they can. But they may not be able to get this plan in shape before the financial collapse. It is a very big task. And therefore, another thing is, first contact will not come before the financial collapse. It will come afterwards. And so you have some time because not enough people on your planet are open to first contact uh, yet. Disclosure is coming little by little, and that is the best way to do it. Worldwide disclosure has not been effective. With large-scale sightings and things of this nature, it's talked about and dismissed. But when it is done locally, people see the ships, they talk about it with their families and friends, their neighbors and their community, then it's more permanent that they understand that there are such things as aliens and they talk about the friendly uh, portions of that the, these beings because they, they have not attacked at any time they have not been aggressive at any yet they are aware that they are there and they are aware now that they have been there for a long time so Localized disclosure has been a lot more effective. And even some larger disclosures in cities such as Los Angeles or Phoenix or things of that nature, Singapore, have helped with people understanding that first contact must come and it must come within the next 10 to 15 years. But remember this. The, not enough of the world is ready. And so these smaller disclosures will continue to happen. Thank you. Um, uh, Don has a question. Go ahead, Don. Do you want to ask it? Or do you want me to ask? I can ask. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Uh, one of my friends uh, sent me a video in which a second light source appears in the northeastern direction of Colorado just as the sun is setting. Can you give me a comment on this, please? Thank you, Shell. Yes, it, it's like a second sun you're talking about? Correct. There has been the shadow, yes, there's a, it's another dimension. You're looking into a different dimension here. And it is not in third dimension. It is, looks like it could be, but it isn't. It's in a different dimension, and so it will not affect you in any way. But it is another dimension as it's closing in on uh, touching the borders of the sun. There is different kinds of energies that humans do not know about at this time. G7 energy, etc. And that will make this visible for a while. And there, there's been a lot of visibilities around the sun recently and that is because the, another dimension is coming through and has hit certain kinds of energies that will expose its existence thank you thank you um i don't see any other questions in the chat if anyone does have a question please please put a I message do. in there's a question back here okay Okay, I, and Wendy will go after it. Hi, yes. Sean. Go ahead. Oh, uh, Will. Yeah, I did a cabal. Go ahead, Will. <laughs> <laughs> um, where does the cabal source their food? Source their food? Where do they get it? Where do they grow it? Where do they? Oh, they get it from wherever. The, they have so many places they can get it from. But they can get it from our world as well. But they do get it from this planet. And from mostly from South America and Africa. Excellent. And you mentioned about them rebuilding their power structure after the financial collapse. 
what can we do as individuals to one be aware of what plan would happen and what uh, countermeasures? Can okay, do? they will try to reestablish a monetary unit that would be worldwide at this time, and that would be a sign that they are taking over again. They would want it to be a, a single coin or single denomination kind of thing that goes throughout all of the countries so that it could be more universal. They would have more control of it. But that is not going to happen if uh, others take control instead. Now, the, um, the light workers and those that are against this plan which are some of the cabal as well, because they have decided to move into a more enlightened stance. There are those that I want to understand. Which are some of the cabal? Hello? Um, There's a feedback. There are those that want to understand that there are different ways to run the world in a more efficient way. And uh, you will see that if the cabal takes over, they will look for a a certain kind of monetary unit to be established around the world. Which will only lead to another collapse eventually because having a monetary unit as your sole reason for survival does not work. Now, you have heard of the marks on the hands and the forehead where they, you're life is used as a credit card and and your bank account is accessed through these different symbols and marks on the hands they will try to establish that as well okay thank you very much um i'm gonna i'm gonna come to you back to you wendy because catalan catalan has a question then we'll come right back to you catalan go ahead yes hi uh, hi shell it's uh, catalan here Greetings. Um, I'm trying to um, understand. Um, I'm trying to have a, a feeling of uh, the DNA, um, let's say, access. Uh, I'm not really working with DNA. I'm, I'm working with my awareness, but I sense that I'm missing this connection with the DNA. Um, Whose DNA? Your own? Uh, my own, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Because I'm, I'm. I would like to like uh, get in contact with my own DNA, um, and and try to um, heal some parts and maybe grow some hair. Um, so in in my meditations, in I'm I'm uh, increasing in my increasing awareness. Um, where this, where, where the DNA gets in the game or is just the enough to, what? I'm sorry, go ahead. Where the DNA gets in the game or is just enough to, um, increase my awareness and, um, okay. There are several different things you can do. First of all, ask God for whatever you need, but you can also speak to your DNA and know that it it does respond. It may not respond very quickly sometimes, but talking to God may be a faster way to get what you need. The thing is about getting what you need and getting in touch with your DNA is that it's part of your belief system. You must believe that things can change. You must believe that these things can happen. It is possible to grow hair. It is possible possible to grow a new limb if you wish if the dna permits you to do so but you see those parts of your dna are not awakened in the brain yet but the thing is if you believe in something strong enough if you want it badly enough you can get what you need now in your dna i see that there are some interesting parts of your DNA, you have some Arcturian, some Pleiadian, you have some things in there that can be very helpful to bringing about the law of attraction. 
which is to just ask and expect things to happen. But you have lived a very third dimensional life. And there is a lot of belief systems around you that tell you that these things can't happen. Do not buy into those things. Buy into the understanding that you are a, a child of God and God has made you a creator being in some senses. You have creator essence within you in your soul and use those essences that God has given you to bring about the things that you want. Yes, I, I appreciate that. And um, uh, I was just asking about DNA and I, I, I feel like I'm... I'm the possession of God, and um, this is the only thing that uh, this is the only thing that makes me um, that's interest that is, is of interest for me. Uh, just God and uh, how to work with Him and um, how to listen to Him and how to dedicate to Him. And, uh, you are doing a, well. Just keep the faith. You will move forward. And I see that you will get some things that you are asking for. But um, don't become discouraged because it's on its way. Just expect it and it will be there. It is not that yes. you have to do anything. It is not that you have to I, be I know. kind of person even. But just because you want it can be a good enough reason. Yeah, okay. Well, I can understand. Thank you very much. Uh, just another question, uh, uh, just to ask question. Usually I don't know. I Usually I don't have questions. So it's been a while I'm in the group and I, I feel I need to talk something. <laughs> usually I yeah. don't have questions. Uh, what's happening in Brazil? With John of God? Um, I, I, I hear there's, uh, there's a lot of, uh, energy development in, in, this, in the, in the whole, yes. in the whole country. The country is going through some changes. Yes, there is an energy there. You see, South America as a whole <clears throat> has been a great place for many aliens, for many different centuries to be there of course there's other places as well egypt middle east and india the the orient china siberia but this is a place where many aliens have uh taken up residence and still have have some residence there and so you're going to find that there are some energies moving in that area that are different than anywhere else. And they're very positive, but yet it will cause some upheaval. Okay. I I heard there's a, there are like seven islands um, opening their light. Yes. And it seemed it seemed um, it seemed uh, uh, interesting. And yeah. um, um and, uh, it yeah, is I, not yet time for me to say what that is all about, but it will become apparent. Ah, okay, so there is something going on. Okay. Yes, definitely. Thank you very much, and I love you. And I love you as well. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you. We don't hear enough from you, Catalan, so thank you for you're right. It's nice when you get to talk a little bit. Excellent. <laughs> thank you, Karen. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Pamela has a question. We'll come back to you, Wendy. Sorry. Keep moving you down a little. Pamela? She's unmuting. You, your unmute button's at the top of your screen. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Yes, thank you. I uh, apologize. Um, Many light workers, um, including myself, have been having lucid dreams as of lately. And for example, the other night, it was so clear. I was speaking with a dolphin uh, eye to eye, 
having contact and communication. And then all of a sudden I'm riding a baby elephant and I'm wondering why these lucid dreams are uh, hitting. Uh, I don't know if anybody else has had, you know, uh, more lucid dreaming lately, but uh, is, is there an explanation for that? You will see some changes in the animal kingdom, um, especially the birds these days. Uh, birds have become the communicators to humans and giving messages to them through the subconscious. But other animals have now become part of that as well. Uh, dolphins and whales are holders of light in the ocean and bringer, bringers of peace to the planet. And so that it is one of uh, their many things. There's, uh, they are related to the dolphin and whale uh, alliance from Pleiadia and Andromeda. So it is something that is happening. And the elephant, uh, <laughs> whenever I think of an elephant, I think of Ganesh. So I'm thinking that perhaps he had some influence on that tree. All right. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. Wendy has a question. Go ahead, Wendy. Oh, thank you for all this. It prompted so many questions for me. Um, I too have been having a lot of lucid dreams. So thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> and um, something you said a little while ago about the sun prompted me a couple of days ago. I was just happened to see, I happened to look up at the sun and there was this like a, like a ball, a ring around it, but not just your typical. And as soon as I, I was like, I was receiving information and they said to me, this is a Stargate. This is a Stargate. And I was wondering if you could, is, is that what we were talking about just a few minutes ago? And I actually did a video and the, and I heard you, the Shikani saying, this is, you are all Stargates. This is a representation, yes. representation that you are all Stargates. Well, this, there is a Stargate there. That is, you saw that at one point within the last couple of months, there was the shutdown of many solar uh, observatories because a, a Stargate did open and a large ship came through. And it uh, also had many smaller ships that it was releasing. They were... In, not in this dimension, as I was saying before, it was from another dimension, but they could be seen by these observatories, and that's why they were shut down. And yes, these are star. There are some stargates there, and but they will not always be visible. These stargates open there for a reason, and there will be, they will be closed. But your stargates on your planet will eventually open uh, for a different reason. So, yes, stargates are starting to be uh, important and come into the thought process of your world. Can you comment then on so many of us recently, and I'm just going to hold this up really quick. Um, it's, these are just uh, symbols that I've been drawing, and many of us have been receiving receiving these galactic symbols and many more people are wanting to speak light languages and are being more interested in light languages and um so i was what can you comment on the what is the correlation between so many of us wanting to share um and speak light languages and drawing these are these symbols can you can you comment a little bit more on what these symbols are that we're receiving and how are they relating to what is happening here? Um, many people ask me this, and I'm not quite sure how to answer it these correctly. Are, some of these symbols are about alien protocols, how you will welcome each other on the planet. And the reason for the light languages is because first contact will come eventually and many people with light languages will be able to facilitate some understanding to others through these light languages but these symbols sometimes there are beings that uh give symbols as a welcoming protocol just as you handshake or salute or whatever it is that you do some of these symbols 
our welcoming protocols. So that is for first contact use. Okay, that's exactly what I thought. I was I was receiving that information, and I really just wanted confirmation on that because I feel like as I'm getting them, they're like it's different uh, races and planets and telling me stories about their lives, their their civilizations, their their like as if I'm a galactic yep. ambassador sharing their stories. The interesting things about these symbols are how they were how they came about as their welcoming symbols. That's why you're getting the stories. They're telling you how these symbols have come about, how their uh, protocol has changed over the centuries, and that these symbols have become symbols of great meaning for them. And so they want people to uh, be able to know that they are peaceful, that they are coming to help humanity, and these are all very positive protocol signs and symbols. Oh, that's very exciting. Thank you for that. And many of us have been feeling as if we can create these symbols intentionally to specifically hone in, for example, on a particular belief system, a particular maybe physical ailment, um, that we can create these intentionally to say, I'm going to use this slip to uh, um, accelerate my healing process. Is that is that real? <laughs> okay, your healing modalities on your planets use symbols and actions to uh, channel energy better. You have raw energy in your hands, you have raw energy in your being, but when you learn these modalities, it takes those symbols and makes them uh, honed in on the illness or honed in on areas that need more attention and brings the energy into the person in a stronger way. It also facilitates bringing in outside energies from the earth and the universe that are not being used in the raw form. When you're just using your raw energy, it's coming from you. It's coming from uh, you may have some earth energy and sky energy in there, but when the symbols are put into you and made part of you, you are able to use them in a more efficient way. That's excellent. Thank you so much. That is exactly what I've been receiving about them, and you've just really confirmed um, everything and how I've been guided to use them and how to really get them more out into the world to help other people to understand they have their own power to do this. Remember and it's just this. to help them along. These symbols, if you have not, if you have not learned them from another modality, another energy source, remember to seal them into yourself. Use your hand, seal them into your body so that they're more effective. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you being here today. Very well. I feel like I am using up all the time and someone else should come. There are more questions for you if you would like to stay or we can take them to the next being. There is someone in the room that has a question. Okay. Hi, Shell. I would like to go back to the, the dual sun. You were talking about the third dimension and a different dimension touching and getting close. With that, with humanity is because our energy is raised enough that we are able to see that, that our, we, uh, as being able to see fourth dimensional energies, we seeing uh, this, is that why we or more people are able to see this and capture it? Or is it actually more to it than that? There is more to it than that. Let me tell you, yes, many of you have fourth dimensional energy that are open and you're able to see things that most third dimensional people cannot see because it's getting strong. You're able to see ships that other people cannot see. You're able to see and feel things that other people cannot feel. But in this case, it is actually the fourth dimension and the third dimension coming into 
contact with one another through a specific energy that is around the sun. So yes, you as people are becoming more sensitive to fourth dimensional energy. There's no question. But everyone will be able to see these signs around the sun. It does not require that you have a great deal of fourth dimensional energy or that you're even open to it. Many who are very third dimensional have already have also seen these things. Well, is it because the energy is raised enough that everyone is able to see it? Well, everyone would be able to see it anyway. All right. But yes, there are the, there is a raise in every single human of fourth dimensional energy. Whether it's a large raise or a small raise is uh, is individualized but it is saying that anyone everyone will be able to see these things if they're looking for it if they're <laughs> they look hard enough thank you okay thank you uh sean you have a question yes uh, i just want to say yaki yasu liashi yasu no uh, hello my brothers and sisters um my question is, uh, in your guys' uh, opinion, uh, the Shikani, uh, what is the fastest way or the best way uh, on this planet to achieve harmony? Thank you. Ah, the best way to achieve harmony on this planet is to become the example of harmony. You must, each and every one of you, strive for it. The, and you must maintain it. I know that there are many of you out there going, oh, that would be wonderful to have harmony, but you are not a carrier of it. You, you do not stay in harmony, and you get out of harmony very easily because there is lots of energy disruptions. There is lots of things that can pull you out of that beautiful, lovely, calming, loving energy. And so this is where we need to be. We must find a place where we can be stable with positive energy and love and understanding, compassion, unconditional love as it is. You see, being able to be pulled out of that so easily is not the, the example you want to give to the world. Plus, if you are in that calm, uh constant harmony state you're able to send that out through the world just as the earthquakes keep the earth sh shaking you can keep the love moving does that make sense to you that you are the bringers of this state of mind you are the bringers of this state of mind it does not happen any other way but through you so you can pray to God that you are stay in that harmonious state and that your example be that example of peace, love, and understanding that is necessary for the world to find and see the joy in it so they want to be more like you, so they want to be more like that. There will always be someone, you say, that will be... Uh, against that or th will not uh, resonate with it however everything can be overcome by love eventually so you must not take an attitude that not everyone will do this you must take an attitude <laughs> that this is what I must do and this is the way that I must do it and maintain it and keep it in God's light in God's understanding God's in eternal love and unconditional uh, understanding because you must go to each person around you and be loving to them no matter what they've said or done to you, no matter what kind of horrible person you think they are. If you think they're a horrible person, you must know something about them that's very devastating but you, guess what? You still have to love them. You still have to give them love and understanding. We are, they are a human being. 
They have the, the light of God within them. You have to reach out and find it. That might be difficult. Thank you very much, and it most certainly is. You have my eternal love and gratitude. Thank you. Much love to you. Thank you, Sean. It's nice to see you there. Okay, um, from the chat, we have a question from uh, Relic. Relic is asking, and I hope I can say this word correctly. He says, can there be such a thing as a eucominopolis? Eucominopolis. Eucominopolis, <laughs> which means, I don't think I said it right. It's a city that covers the, the planet's whole surface. Um, there is uh, there is one planet that I know of that does have that kind same kind of scenario. It's a small planet, yeah. but they they sort of ran out of room, and so every pretty much every inch of their planet is used for housing. And they and even the buildings that they grow their food in are still part of the metropolis because they have to be. And they have their animals, and uh, it is an interesting place because it does not work on an ecosystem that is natural, but an ecosystem that has been developed over eons of great blood, sweat, and tears for their people so they can survive. Plus, also, they've reached out to other planets as well. But on this particular planet, they have chosen uh, to be a, a full community that never ends. Okay. Ucumenopolis. I don't know. I can't say. I'm still trying. <laughs> Ucumenopolis, I think it is. Okay. Anyway, uh, the, question, the next question is from Linda. It's again about the cabal. And she wants to know... Uh, well, she says, she didn't ask a question, she just made a statement, but she said, I've heard the Cabal is even in space. Uh, well, yes. To some extent, they are, yes. Okay. And, and that is all I can really comment about that, but you are correct. Okay. And then Carol has two questions. Um, she says, the moon is nothing compared to the light being of the sun. Can you please elaborate on that? Um, I'm not sure that there's a question. I, I know. For people in the chat, just, just as a helpful help, please formulate a question that has a question mark at the end of the sentence. And please, don't. if you're making a statement, make a statement that is followed by a question. Um, she goes um, on to say, but I heard we will not need financial pr uh, programs once the people from the sun come into contact with us for the cabal or any negative being will become weak and will have no power. Can you explain this? Well, there are different theories of what is going to happen in the future. All nows are happening at the same time, but there are ways to change the future. And the ways to change the future is to either go back and change a past now or change a present now or have other people who have not made decisions about the future make decisions. Now, you are seeing a scenario that is a possibility from the sun's point of view. There are beings in the suns, in many of the suns, especially the older ones, but it is not necessary for them to come to earth for things to uh, change in the, in the way of the cabal. But if they see it's necessary, they will do so. But the thing is, right now, they are not destined to come at this moment. They, But it is written in the galactic uh, prophecy that the sun will have something to do with the Earth's condition more than in more than one way. So this is something that is yet to be seen, and I don't want to make any actual predictions, but I love the question. Uh, the moon, on the other hand, is inhabited by other species and is not going to be uh, beneficial, uh, not going to be in any way beneficial or 
and detrimental to the earth in any way. Most of the people there are just observing. They're looking through the moon at the earth. They have uh, put themselves in a place of observers, uh, at least most of them. There is a couple that will eventually uh, want to interact with the earth, but there are some of those species will probably never uh, interact with earth uh, until they're well established as a galactic contact. Okay. Um, Peter has a question. He's asking about, uh, and thank you for that explanation. Uh, Peter's asking, can you please tell us if the mail bombs that were sent to the politicians were something compared, uh, something prepared by the cabal or a false flag? They were prepared by a man with uh, mental instabilities. Yeah. Um, if you look at his record, he is someone that has had many, uh, uh, well, not felonies, but he has had felonies, but he has had crimes in his past life, and he is an in instable human being. Um, the cabal could use a person like this. They could make suggestions to him. Of course, you will not see the cabal in the picture at all, but I'm sure that someone has made suggestions to him to do this. So um, I'm sure that um, it was uh, someone from a higher realm of government that probably prompted some of this uh, thought process. Do you but not let me also say this. Yes. Can I, can I interject something or ask a question? Do you not think that the constant uh, reiteration of hate speech, the encouragement of yes. uh, fear uh, that says that everyone's out to get each other, that, do you oh, yeah. think that that is a trigger for both sides, to for people that are unstable, who feel helpless, who feel like they don't have anyone protecting them to yes. take matters into their own hands? And to do something but like this is not is that not the work of the cabal? Oh, really? Yes, it is, and it's coming right from the top. <laughs> it's coming so right yes, that's top. what I'm saying. Indirectly, it's the work of the cabal. It's because of all the hate and the all the ways that things are being transmitted, it is a it is indirectly the work of the cabal. Yes. They could keep us at arms, then they are winning. Of course. If they can keep you in fear, they're winning. All right. Is that the end of it? I do not hear you any longer. Oh, sorry. Yes, it is on this side. There's no more questions. Very well. Someone else should come through while there is still time. Thank you for all your wonderful questions. I must go. Thank you, Shell, always. I'm only here for a brief moment. Welcome. I am Arshi and Nana. Oh, welcome. I believe that Don has a question for you, if you are able. They let me through because the question may be important. Don? Hello, Ashiana. Blessings and welcome to this group. Um, can you state the... Uh, importance of November the 1st here on Earth and why, um, well, why that ceremony has been taking place of uh, sacrifices. There are those on your planet that wish to bring harm and bring negativity forth. And there are those that wish to stop it. But November 1st is All Saints Day. And that, I believe that is correct. Is that not right? That is correct. Yes. yes. 
And so therefore to offset the work of the saints, they do this to balance the negativity. Thank you. And can you um, further elaborate on the uh, Galactic Federation of Worlds? The Galactic Federation of Worlds is, we call, you have many names for it, the Galactic Federation of Worlds, the Galactic Council, the, we are all, it, it is all the same worlds that are in these different places. We have representatives from many different places. And with this, we also have many decisions to make and many laws to uphold, especially when it comes to your planet at this moment. We must listen to what your governments have to say so that we must uphold what your governments want for their people. You have elected these people as your leaders in many cases. And so we look to them as your spokespeople. So we are listening to what they have to say and abiding by their rules. And so if it's your rule, uh, your government rule, then it is also a galactic rule. Now, in saying that, there are rules that do not apply to some beings because they have been grandfathered in from past thought processes and have been allowed to continue their work on your planet, but they are not allowed to be seen. They are not allowed to look like aliens, but they can work there in some places looking like humans. Now, we are a federation of planets that are in alliance with fairness and with cooperation. We hope that one day that you will become part of us, that you will reach out and ask for our help, for we cannot give it without your permission. If something were to happen on your planet that was catastrophe, uh, a catastrophe or something that you have caused yourself, such as a war, we could not help you with that unless you asked us to. We will not interfere with your politics, your science, your peoples, until we are asked to become part of it. And even then, we would be hesitant. And the reason for that is that we sometimes, as we've seen in the past, we're trying to be helpful and cause more problems than we did help. So it would have to be quite a dire situation. But at this point, we make laws for the all the worlds in this universe as we know it this galaxy i should say there are some that reach out farther than this galaxy that asks for our help and we are able to give it to them but this galaxy is our domain and we will uh help and guide and direct and give laws to those that are willing to follow <laughs> that are part of the space programs that are intergalactic. We do not interfere with those that are still evolving and have not gathered space travel yet. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any are questions for, for, for our friend? Ashiana. Thank you. <laughs> you caught me on. <laughs> yes. I can't say the name. Yes, Will. So, where are you from? Are you? Do you have anything to do with the Pegasus or the field of Pegasus? <laughs> the field of Pegasus. Explain. That's the only thing that came to me. 
Um, and it is possible that yes, it is a, a field of stars. Yes. Yes, that is correct. Okay, and have you had contact with Earth before, like six thousand years ago? Yes, and before. Of course, of course, and does does your interaction have anything to do with the rise of the cabal around six thousand years ago? Our interaction did not have anything to do with that. We were more observers at that time, but now we're more active in the galaxy than we once were. Excellent. Thank you. You are welcome. Thank you. Is there Are there any other questions? And thank you for telling us a bit about who you are. Is there any other questions? When you the, the field of Pegasus, it is a, a, a field of stars. Mm -hmm. And we are from that area of space. But we had to clarify that because, of course, we do not have that same name for that area. And we do not have that same uh, sight of it. You see that realm of stars in a different way than we do because of, of our direction in space, of course. So we see it quite differently. Are you also the, the Galactic Federation of Light or the Galactic Council? Are they all the same or are they... Different. Galactic Council, Galactic Government, yes, we are very much one and the same. Galactic Council of Planets, Galactic Alliance of Planets, hmm. but there are others that are separate from us. The Galactic Council of Light is different. Okay, I had an experience when I was 19 years old, and it's my one of my only two experiences with uh, what I would consider to be extra dimensionals or extra terrestrial beings, extraterrestrial to me, obviously. Um, but I was, I was in college and I was learning meditation and I, and I started to meditate and all of a sudden I was standing on the board of a ship and I was standing behind what would be like a council, uh, not, not council, but council, C-O-N-S-O-L-E, I know um, it's you. Mean, where yes. People were sitting sort of in a row in front of me and I was standing there and I distinctly remember one of the human looking uh, people turning around and looking at me and saying, oh, well, oh, hello, you know, just like I arrived there all the time and he wasn't startled and I was more confused, but he greeted me and then I saw in, and they were looking over uh, now, they weren't looking out of a ship. They were looking at a panel of what seemed to be TV type screens. And, and each screen was on a different location. And I asked them what they were doing. And he said they were watching the development of several different planets. And that they were waiting for, they said they were, they were watching the Adams and the Eves. And, and I didn't get the imp impression that they meant that in a biblical sense, but more in a sort of first group of people sense and that they were watching the Adams and the Eves and they were watching for a certain level of intelligence to be demonstrated on each one of these planets. Uh, yes. So meaning so that they, so maybe, I don't know if that, you know, that's my, and then, then, I was sort of contemplating that in my mind, and then all of a sudden I was back, and, and I haven't had any experience since then, but it, it's so still very clear to me now, even 30 years later, I remember it as in, very much in detail as I said it to you. There was a reason for this. Mm -hmm. They wanted you to know that they exist. They also will be uh, calling on you at a later date for uh, some purpose. But that is that purpose is not clear to me. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, there's a question from within the chat. If you, uh, it's a, it's from Richard. He said um, humans are considered slaves to most governments. Why not just trade humans that want to leave with resources? Because your government does not permit it, and we go by your government is. You see, I mentioned earlier that your government has been elected by the people, or for the most part, and represent the people. 
not in all places, but for the most part. And so we have to go by this directive that your governments make the rules and we follow them. Now, there will be come a time with after first contact where people will be allowed to come off your planet and will be allowed to go to your planet. But we do not see this happening for a while yet. But we wish we could bring some of your people up for uh, health reasons and help them out with some of the more dire cases of sicknesses and illnesses and crippling things that are on your planet. I do not know how to say it any better. But this is not permitted either. His question implies that you all are providing resources uh, already. Is that, is that the case? We provide counsel. We do have the galactic councils every year. Well, there's usually three, but since uh, recently, there's only been two this year. And there's another one coming in January, the middle of January. But the thing is, these councils are the only con contact that we really have with your planet. And they do give them informational resources. Whether they use them or not is up to your governments. All right, there's a question from Derek Pinto. He he wants to know uh, what will be part of what part will Bitcoin be in the next coming rev financial revolution? I guess he's looking for stock tips. Is there any? I do not think that we do not pay much attention to your economy because your economy is fragile and will. Uh, discontinue itself eventually but this Bitcoin you speak of is will reach a ceiling and it will stop being important to many people okay. but it it, it uh, has a while to go before that happens okay. thank you for that we don't have any questions on our side are there any questions in your room I do not know. No, there are not. Very well. Thank you very much for coming to us. It was a pleasure to be here. There is someone else that wants to come. Thank you. Yeah. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> One moment. Yeah, so you bring me on at the end. I don't have much time, man. We wanted you to make an entrance. Yeah, yeah. All right. Where's the trumpets? There you go. Yeah. All right. Hello. Hello. Welcome, Grindel. Yeah. Any questions for me today? Yes, Dave has a question. Go ahead, Dave. I agree. Right. Well, so good to hear from you. Yeah, lovely. Thank you. So I was watching a movie, and I had this being come forward. Uh, his name is Shira Quat, and he said he was a Zespod. Yes. So I was wondering if you could perhaps share a bit of information on him, because I felt a really strong connection to him. This is what he looks yeah. like. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. He is in the military also, just like I was. I'm no longer in the military, by the way, but I was. But he's in the military still, and they're planning to do some more uh, military projects like they did with me, and I'm not sure if you know about that or not, but um, they're going to plan to do a couple more walk-ins in uh, different militaries. They've done it in the United States and in Russia and in um, where else? They, they've done it in a few places, but they're going to be doing it in smaller countries now, like uh, France and Germany and all those places. So, and uh, to look at their uh, military status and how, uh, which one's the most efficient, and um, 
he he's just one of those kind of people that likes to uh find people that will um give him information and i you must have given him some kind of information can you say if you look something similar to what he looks like just so i can get an idea yeah sort of i'm much more handsome <laughs> okay i look a lot better yeah I just wanted to get an idea of yeah, what he's a, he's a sort of grizzly looking thing there. But anyway, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I've had some work done. <laughs> no, just <laughs> you had work done. Thank yeah, no, 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 scale enhancement. Yeah, but anyway, I'm fine. No, he's he and I look. We're from the same species, so we do have similar looks. But everyone looks different, of course. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Um, Ava has a question. Go ahead, Ava. Uh, Ava, my dear, how are you? I am I so happy to hear your voice. <laughs> oh, oh you're God. echoing and screeching and everything. You must have yeah. two speakers on. You got to try yes, to yes, yes. Okay, it will be one now. Um. My question is, um, I really like your close to the ground approach to advice. Um, so I want to ask you about actually how technically, how, is there anything way to actually forgive? Because see, I send love to people who harm me to help myself forgive them. <clears throat> but then when I face them, I still kind of freeze and don't want to deal with them. Yeah. So the forgiveness really doesn't happen on deep level. It's almost like an emotional protection not to forgive. So how yeah. do you actually do that? Well, you have to realize, you have to look at people differently. You're looking at them for the things they did to you or the things that you know about them, or the things that are bad about them in your mind. You have to look, you have to look at them like you never met them before, and this is the first time you're looking at them and say, they're a child of God, just like everybody else, and love them as if you, like they're your best friend and you've never met them before. And, this is the only way you can do it really you is to look at them as they are god's child look at them as they are someone that you want to get to know and you don't really know who they are because having known all the bad stuff about them you really need to start learning what the good stuff about them is i had to do that with humans so, I mean, there were a few of you that are like, uh, no, thank you. But the thing is, I learned to love you the way you are and for who you are and the way that you present yourself. And it is difficult, especially when you know a bunch of bad shit about somebody, to be, be nice to them and treat them nice and and look at them differently. But that's what you have to do. You have to give it a whole new vision. These are not the people that you knew. This is somebody else because you don't really know their deep, deepest, darkest inside. They may be a wonderful person to somebody else. And you have to find that. Isn't that is that cool or what? Yes, okay, I'll try to remember this. I have another quick question to you. Um, yeah. A few days ago, I saw this. Can you see? There is like, there's a cloud. Can you see it well? Uh, the, I don't it, see a cloud anywhere. Where, what are you looking at? I'm trying to show you my phone. See, there is. Uh, can you camera. see that? Your camera's, camera's not on. Oh, freak. Okay. Now, now my grandma is on. Yeah, your camera's not on, so I can't see anything. Oh, 
Okay, anyway, a few days ago, I saw this cloud, which was very different than the others. It wasn't moving, like every other yeah. cloud around was, but it was very still. And it felt like, how about now? It felt like, is there a ship behind it? Yeah, there probably was. If you see that something's moving differently in the sky than what everything else is moving, there's something there's something to be explored about that situation. Because the clouds are all moving together. Now, if there's a cloud just staying still and all the other clouds are moving around it, that yeah, and doesn't make any sense. It doesn't follow yeah. the laws of physics. Mm -hmm. And so, therefore, uh, there's something there. Yeah, it was yeah. kind of, the shape was also very defined and not changing. I was thinking, you know, but it's not normal. Yeah, so it was probably a so they were hiding. Thank they were so probably much. creating the cloud that they were hiding behind uh, or a vision of a cloud. They were sending the, the holographic image of a cloud Whatever they were doing, they were disguising their appearance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, Grindel. It's such a pleasure to talk to you always. Ah, thanks. Yeah. Okay. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you. Catalin has a question. Go ahead, Catalin. Catalin. Hey, Grindel. How's it going? Greetings. Uh, um, can you elaborate on? Um, um, the Israeli uh, Prime Minister uh, Netanyahu, is it part of the uh, Cabal and Rothschild um, stuff? Yeah, I, I, I know a lot about him because I have to uh, be uh, uh, sort of close to him, but not really close. I'm, I'm sort of close, but sort of far away. So therefore, I have to sort of know about him. But yeah, what do you want to know? He's definitely a cabal person, yeah. Okay. Is it, uh, is it any time uh, taking a walk from, from the, what's he doing anytime soon? I do not know. I'm trying to get to him and... Uh, figure out what his thought processes are on certain things, but he's very closed lipped. He doesn't make a lot of announcements. Yeah. And so it's difficult to know what he's thinking. But right now we're, uh, I think that uh, there's some, some problems that he's dealing with, with the government right now, but they're sort of, top secret yes exactly and it looks like he's uh, trying to um, get away and um, uh, get get help from like to get away from the uh, government and to run like like run away actually yeah I think that there's a there's a real something real uh secret that's happening that uh not everybody knows about yet so we'll see what happens can you elaborate on the who are the white dragons which ones the white dragons under norway and the the scandinavian or the human white dragons the human white dragons the society the site the white dragons yeah, I don't know much about them, to be honest with you. I have not been in there, so I can't really comment about something I don't really know about. Okay. Well, that 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 will be all. Thank you very much, man. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Grindle, your friend Sean has a question for you. Yes, and then there's one in the room here. Okay, fine. Thank you. Uh, yo, what's up? Uh, yeah, um, yeah. Um, how's your tail? It's oh a kind of... I shortened it again, so I had a tail cut. It'll grow oh. back. Oh, cool. Um, I, I, I just, I was just wondering. I heard you mention that, like, you guys do walk-ins, and I'm just curious. Like, is that not yeah. bad public relations 
to do walk-ins because you have people in the government that can tell if you're a walk-in or not. So, like, well, the I'm thing just... is, we find just special situations for walk-ins. Like, my walk-in was somebody that was terminally ill, and what I did was made made a deal with him that if he let me come in and use his body for several years, I would cure him and give him back his life. And so <clears throat> that is what happened. So we do these walk-ins very discretionary. They, they're not just anybody. There has to be someone that agrees to do it. Someone that knows what our agenda is. And they make out by doing it as well so yeah we're not just greedy about it <clears throat> but we do help help the other person as well i we used his body for almost 10 years but he, i gave it him back his life when i was done with it and then he went back to his family and everything they they didn't know what happened so there all the history of it was filled in it, it seemed like a perfect, a perfect scenario. So, uh, <clears throat> different things happen for different reasons. Yeah. So we do it. We do it discretionally and make sure that uh, no one is any wiser or no foul play is done either. So my understanding is that uh, you are going to do it on lower level people then. Like, Most of the time, it will be lower level people, but we'll probably end up bringing them to a little higher level before everything's done because we're born leaders compared to uh, some of your Earth people. Depends on who we take over uh, that way. If they're a leader, they were already going to rise. If they weren't a leader, then, uh, you know, the person that we sent there w will be definitely a leader so they'll probably rise to the top of the heap eventually okay thank you you're welcome barb barb grandall yes go ahead grandall yes i am grandall yeah this is more of a confirmation for me is i've seen like a little brat black Bean or whatever I saw his legs earlier this morning go behind a chair. Is that like elemental that I'm seeing? Yes, you're seeing an elemental. Okay, thank you. Yeah, he's probably wearing black pants. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I don't know. Some of them are black, but not very many of them. I didn't, when I see them, mostly they're green colored or orangey oh. color and yeah they're different colors i guess thank you yeah okay all right thank you um one question sorry oh i i, I see okay um the question is from uh pamela go ahead pamela pam yes hi grendel uh sending and much love to you Sending much Let's love go. to you. Yeah. Uh, I'm very curious, a uh, couple of things. Uh, somebody mentioned something to me the other day and I really didn't believe them. So I looked online and saw several pictures of the Pope's audience hall. And I noticed that uh, it's in kind of the shape of a serpent where the colored windows are and there's like reptilian head above where the Pope sits and there are two white columns that tend to look like fangs. I'm curious what this is about. Do you know anything about it? It's the inside of the Pope's audience hall and it, you can yeah. see it online. Well, um, there's different kinds of Popes, all right? There are good Popes and there's bad Popes. But the one, but there is a group of people in the Vatican that are not a good group of people. And that's who designed that. And they are, um, they are not good people. And so, yes, that, that is true. It does, it does definitely look like that. So, um, 
not everybody is aware of that, but I it will be all exposed eventually. So it'll be um, it'll be on the news for weeks at a time. I see. But, well, and people can channel. Uh, people can look at it online. Believe it or not, if those are real pictures. Um, also, they're starting to be exposed now. You're seeing many priests and cardinals and uh, bishops that are starting to tumble because the truth about what they are doing and what they've done is coming out. So many of these people were very corrupt. Thank you. And my last question is, I suppose, rather personal. I was uh, trying to, I uh, was talking with Barbara and uh, I believe that I, I believe that I channeled you. I was very comfortable channeling you. And I just wanted yeah. to know basically if, um, you know, how that went, because I'm a fairly new channeler myself. And I went okay, except you, there's no room for my tail. That's why I had a cut. Um, you're smaller, so yeah, I have to really squeeze in, but that was fine. You were good. Thank you so much for that. Gain about 30 pounds, okay? Oh, I've already gained 30. No, thank you. My love to you, yeah. Randall. Thank, thank you. Uh, yeah. yeah. And actually, with me to have you come through and smile for me. Yes. 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 Yeah, I came through as much as I could. Yeah. <laughs> You're, you didn't let me through all the way. Yeah. She didn't let me through. So yeah. I might have got a yeah in there, but that's about it. <laughs> so anyway. Okay. We have a question from Ian. Go ahead, Ian. Yeah. Hi, Pamela, mute your mic, please. Oh, she's gone. Okay, never mind. Hi, Grendel. Um, I've I've been told that I, I that it's a possible that I'm a walk-in. Is that? Do you know if I'm a walk-in or not? No, you're not a walk-in. I don't think. I'll have to check you out though. When I go get home, I'll do a scan on you. I can't do it right at this moment, but I can do it later. Who told you you were a walk-in? Well, it was because I sleep for days at a time, and I was told that oh, I had that time. Perhaps you have a walk-in, but um, when you're you're when you're like this, there's no walk-in there. But in your sleep, I'll have to check that out. Now to check it out. Yeah, it's possible. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, all right. I'll let you know. Okay, we only have two minutes left. Uh, so would you like to take another question or are you ready to go? One more question and then I'm done. Okay, Wendy has a question. Go ahead, Wendy. Hi, yeah, Grindel. Wendy. I had almost I had almost an identical question um the other day. I felt like you and I had an, a hilarious conversation. You were helping me with something and I literally felt like I was, you were right there with me and I was channeling you and this, you said exactly the same thing. You were, I was asking you about how you fit the energy about a fitting in. And you said something like that to me about you're so tiny. I couldn't even fit my tail there. And so I have to sit like, yeah outside of you a little bit did that it's actually did we actually have that conversation the thing is um yeah if it was a hilarious conversation it was definitely me um so because i'm hilarious but um other than that i'm i'm very serious and hilarious but <laughs> yes you it was a serious I conversation but it I really couldn't fit into you. I really, there isn't any way. That's what you said. You're like, you're like, you're so tiny. I can barely, I can't even get my tail. There, so I just have to sit I, I and answer your questions from kind of out here. Yeah. I'm, no way. No way. I mean. Um, I had a question about someone who's close to me too, who 
there was a little bit of a sound like a language coming out. Um, I heard in my head, oh, oh, that's reptilian. And then a few minutes later, I asked him about it. And I said, what was that that you were saying? And he said, oh, or what, what language is that? And he said, it was lizard. And I said, oh, okay. Um, lizard Can you tell reptilian. me anything about that? Yeah, same thing, except um, maybe a different uh, colloquialism or something. Uh, but we have similar languages. Yeah. So, okay, so I was wondering if that if he was actually speaking a lizard language. Yeah, yep. <laughs> okay, thank you. All right. All right, I guess it's time to go. <coughs> um, it was good talking to you. Have a good day. Oh, Elijah wanted to come. You uh, too, thank you. Like, all right. All right, have a great day. Thank you, you too. Hello. Hello. Hi. Karen, just to let you know we can't hear you. Oh, welcome back. Oh, thanks. <laughs> That's all I Thank said. You. Thank you. So, should we close with a blessing? Who wants to do a blessing? No, I won't. I'll do one on this side. Okay, Karen. Who else? Me. I'll do I'll one do too. One. Oh, Barb. Let's. Barb and then Wendy. Sure. Did I hear? Was it Wendy that said yes or? Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. So doing? I'll start because. Okay. I figure because I'm already ready. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Shalia number Santi Kashumia Ti Kalia Patu Shalia Din Sandio Shomia Kata Lofiamana Niakia Opati Lassia. In that year, Koso Shamala, Yakia Mindi, Tiafa Shinimia, O Pararia, Calier Santi, Tucumia, Italia Sita, Moshele, Duya, Yamasiala, Copia Yara, Niaco, Mianese. Light shows the way, but love is the true guide. So embrace these things that you may go forward in a way that is beautiful and prof profitable in the sense that you will make a great light trail that people will see for many, many years. Remember to always express the truth and keep things special. Sorry. Lost track there at the end. It's okay. It was a long message. Okay, go ahead. Who's next? Wait. Or have I Shantai? <coughs> <coughs> Let us give thanks for today, for all things work together for good for those who love God. And today was a day of working together. All of you were in one accord, one thought process, and one heartfelt message came through that love was the winner for today and that it will continue to light up the universe forever. Thank you. And Wendy, go ahead. Nashiato ila siato sono ke la katoria samola maliano no kork pore sheke. Sonora, 
Selundera, Sogoria, Sharagoliandor, Sibolongoria, Shokua, Korake, Platera, So, Sabadiandosho, Kalandara, Saliandoro, Shokola, Platera, Salekale, Sore, Sharakala, Tia Toresha. Namaste. Thank you. Thank God for all the things that are happening, for they are in His will. The light will not fade, but get brighter. It may seem like darkness is overcoming everything, but God's light will shine through it and make sure that all his people are gathered. God is here, and he is not going away anytime soon. And he is here for his people to light the way for all the rest of the world. Let it, let it be known that he is true and faithful. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right. So next week, uh, I will be channeling uh, for first time in a long time. Uh, and uh, then we also have the event with uh, you, Will, and yes, Wendy. Embracing, and embodying, and emulating the true life. And I'll put the link also, and I'll I'll put the link to the event in the um, in the comments section of this video. And I've been sharing it also on my Facebook page, on Languages of Lights, and on my Google page, and on the Hookalo page. So I've been sharing it around as well. So um, you know, if you guys need to find it, uh, you can find it here too. Perfect. I okay. wanted to thank everybody for the reviews on the book as well. There's like five on there now, so it's good. Thank you very much. It's a great book. It's a Thank great you. Book. Yeah. All right. So till next week, till next time, uh, we will see everyone and much love and namaste. Have a wonderful week, everybody.